In this video, I'm going to show you what I call the simple smart money strategy. Basically, I've taken what I've learned from ICT, the inner circle trader over the last three, four or five years and have put it into one condensed slideshow so you can learn exactly how to trade the smart money way. This is the strategy that I use. I have been using for the last two years uh, to make a full time income as a trader. And it's what I use every single day live on stream as well. So. This just goes into more depth and will show you how to trade it, give you a nice simple checklist um, so that you can actually trade this mechanically with no questions asked. All right. So this is the strategy I personally use. It's a scalping and intraday trading strategy. Okay. So I'm typically in and out of the markets within one to two hours at most. All right. So just to preface that, like I said here, I use the strategy to trade the last two hours of the New York afternoon kill zone session. Those of you who watch me trade live every day, I trade from about 2.30 p.m. Eastern time through to 4 p.m. Eastern time. And I can typically catch a good move with this strategy during that time. But this strategy will work all day, morning session, afternoon session, overnight, London, whatever. Um, it's universal. Okay, these concepts work any time of the day. And like I said, it's a scalping slash intraday strategy. So you're in and out within one to two hours max. Uh, typically, I hold my trades maybe 15 minutes to half an hour and the longer ones go to one to two hours. All right. But they're nice and quick, nice quick moves and you can secure decent profit and they're very easy to see once you train your eye to look for these concepts. Okay. Look for these patterns forming in the chart and uh, watching the price action to do what we expect it to do. All right. So, and I'm going to go into uh, specific examples on the chart. We're just going to cover the concepts first, okay? So, for those of you that already know these concepts, use the chapters uh, on the video here. You can skip along to the chapters that are relevant to you. But for those of you that are new, I'm going to run through each of these smart money concepts um, just so you know what they are, know what to look for, and know how to put them together when we jump onto the charts to show you how to use the strategy live. So, Smart money concepts used. So I only use three very simple smart money concepts to frame my trades, okay? Um, the ICT teaches a lot of different concepts. It can be easy to get lost in the source, you know? There's a lot of things he teaches and you can confuse yourself by learning too many concepts. So this just keeps it nice and simple. Of course, as you develop as a trader, you can start to incorporate more smart money concepts, but all you really need to get going is these three concepts here. Liquidity zones, market structure shift, and fair value gaps. It's the basis of what I use every single day to trade and it's all you really need. You can add things later on, but this is all you need to get going, okay? Less is more, helps to avoid analysis paralysis, all right? Scared money doesn't make money. So the less you have to confuse you, the better. Now, concept number one, liquidity zones. So liquidity zones, they are areas where large pools of buy stops and sell stops are, okay? Now, you'll typically find these resting orders at areas of equal or relatively equal highs or lows. Now, the reason for that is because what are we taught in retail? We're taught that equal highs and lows are areas of resistance and support. Okay, and, and you'll find if you I'm sure if you've traded support and resistance, you'll find that oftentimes price will push through support and push through resistance quite deep before continuing in the other direction. Okay, now unknowingly you're experiencing a raid of these liquidity zones okay and i'm going to show you this in more detail shortly but basically any equal high any equal low all those zones that look like support and resistance they are liquidity zones so from a smart money standpoint start to view price as if you were smart money those areas now in your mind should be zones of liquidity okay and i'll show you an example in a second so price tends to seek these areas to grab liquidity as zones to then propel in the opposite direction from, typically. So here's an example. So liquidity zone example number one, we've got equal highs, equal lows. So here we've got perfectly equal lows, all right, to the tick. The wick made perfectly equal lows, bang, bang. Now price doesn't like to leave these equally low for too long. As you can see, price went up, took out the equal lows there, okay? So that was a raid on the sell side liquidity. So anything Below equal lows is sell side liquidity. And same above, we have relative equal highs, places where candles print, you know, equal swing highs there. We've got the high of the wick are equal here. And then all in between, we have relative equal highs. Even over here, this little high here is relatively equal to the ones over here. So that is forming a lot of liquidity on the buy side, okay? So anytime you see this, instead of seeing support and resistance, see buy side liquidity, sell side liquidity. 
All right, that's how you need to start viewing the markets in terms of where is liquidity resting. Now, not only does liquidity rest at equal highs and equal lows, which I use in my strategy, I also use this in my strategy, previous day highs and lows. All right, so if you're on, say, I think this is the 15 minute chart, on the 15 minute chart, I have Friday's high and Friday's low marked out. So when I'm coming into trading on Monday, or whatever the previous day was from your trading day, so if it's Tuesday, you'll mark out Monday's highs and lows, whatever the highs and lows of the previous day were, typically there's a bunch of orders or liquidity resting above the previous day's high and the previous day's low. Now the reason for this is because swing traders or traders who are in positions that they're holding over multiple days, typically they will put their stop loss either at the low of the previous day or the high of the previous day. Even if even if you're trading within Friday, people might catch a move in between here and then they'll place their stop loss at the low and let that ride. So there's always orders resting at highs and lows of the previous day as well. So we're going to keep these zones in mind for the strategy moving forward. And I'll show you this all live on the charts. But for now, this is just getting you used to the concepts. Mark out previous day's highs and lows. Mark out relative equal highs and lows. All right. Now, second concept here is market structure shifts. So this is not particularly a smart money concept, but I use it in this strategy and ICT teaches this quite frequently. So a market structure shift is an easy way to see it is to look at it if we're if price is currently bearish, for example, if price is moving down, it's making lower highs, lower lows, lower high, lower low, that is a bearish market. Now, price will typically give us a little clue, a little tip off to say that, hey, market structure is about to shift. We're about to get a reversal here. And the way you can spot these is by looking for market structure shifts. So if, if price is bearish, making lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, and then price all of a sudden makes an impulse move upwards and breaks the previous swing high, in this case, a lower high, that is a bullish market structure shift. So if we were bearish, you know, if you're expecting to continue to see bearish prices, price theoretically should stop around here, okay? It should have made a lower high here before continuing down. But because there's now a market structure shift, price pushed up above the lower high. So that now gives us a signal that price is now willing to look for buy side liquidity. It's going to go to the upside. So anytime you see this happen, that is a bullish market structure shift. I'll show you an example in a second. Vice versa for bearish market structure, okay? So imagine price is traveling up, higher high, higher low, higher high. It's been doing this all day. But then all of a sudden, instead of price coming down here making a higher low, it pushes down further and makes a lower low, okay? It's shifted. The character of the market is now different. It's gone from making high, 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 low, high, high now to make a lower low. And we can expect that to make a lower high before continuing further down, okay? So it's like this. This is the pattern you're looking for. It's very simplified. Looks like an upside down W, upside down M. Um, and this is how market structure shifts appear on the chart. Now, I'll show you an example here. Now, this is the bullish example. This price is quite choppy in here. There's a bit of news volatility on this spike here, so ignore that. But basically, this is an example of a bullish market structure shift. So we had prices bearish before this, all coming down, down, down. Then we had a lower high form, came down, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. So it was all coming down, zigzag down, all right? And then all of a sudden, instead of coming up making a lower high in the middle here and pushing down more, price pushed right up past the most recent lower high, okay? Now, when you see this happen, when you see price pushing past the most recent lower high, and making a higher high that is a bullish market structure shift and as you can see price retraced a little bit made a higher low and pushed up past all of these so that is an example of a bullish market structure shift now the next one a bearish market structure shift this is a bit easier to see on the chart on this example but cleaner price action so price was bullish all the way up 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 made a higher low higher high higher low higher high right here push past here and then Instead of making a higher low again in between, price just pushed down. It dropped down. Look at that. Broke the higher low, made a lower low. All right. So that's an example of a bearish market structure shift. And you can see the M perfectly there. Look. Da, 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 da. An M with a asymmetrical leg on the other side. All right. That's a bearish market structure shift. Now, concept three, fair value gaps. These are fairly simple to spot. Okay. But put simply, 
A fair value gap is an inefficiency or an imbalance created in price during a rapid price movement. All right. So price will typically find a way to quickly revisit this area before continuing in its original direction. So pay attention to fair value gaps. All right. Now pay special attention to fair value gaps that form immediately after a sweep of liquidity. And we'll get into this soon. I'll show you a live example in the charts. But not all fair value gaps are equal, all right? So only really pay attention to the ones that are formed immediately after that sweep of those liquidity zones, all right? So I'll show you that soon. But first of all, here's an example, nice and easy. A fair value gap is basically where there's a big candle or any sort of candle that has a gap in between the two wicks on either side. So see how most candles, the wicks overlap, 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 or at least touch each other, the wicks. But in some cases, the wicks, the high and low of the previous candle and the candle following do not overlap or do not touch each other and it leaves a sort of gap in between here. Now that is an imbalance in price, okay? And price will typically find a way to return to that exam to that gap before continuing up. And as you can see here, price went up, formed a fair value gap, came back down, filled that fair value gap perfectly and then propelled upwards again, all right? So these are zones of interest that we're gonna have marked out and I'll get into this on the charts very soon. So to tie all those concepts together, before we get into a live example on the charts, we're looking for number one, a sweep of liquidity to occur. Secondly, a shift in market structure to occur. And thirdly, a fair value gap to be created on that shift of market structure. And we're going to enter on that fair value gap and ride price down to our target, which I'll show you soon. Now, typically, I frame my trades from the top down using the following time frames, the one hour, 50 minute and five minute. That's how I look for these sweeps, these market structure changes and the fair value gaps. I typically use those higher time frames to form more reliable views of the market, but you can use this strategy on any time frame that really suits you. But I prefer the one hour, 15 and five minute. It works for my intraday trading strategy. Um, some people use less than that, but I prefer one minute, 50 minute, five minute. And then I'll go down to the three and one minutes just for refined entries and stop loss play placement, which I'll show you soon. So let's look into the charts now and I'll show you two examples of the strategy. First of all, I'll show you an example of the strategy in action after it's swept a previous day's high and previous day's low. All right, so that's that first liquidity, the second liquidity example I showed you. And then after that, I'll show you how it sweeps relative equal highs, relative equal lows before continuing in the other direction. I'll show you where to place your take profit, where to place your stop loss. All right. All right. So here is the first example. So number one, I've marked out Friday, the 21st of April. That was the low here. This week here was the low of the day. Okay. And Friday's high was up here. Okay. So that was Imagine I'm coming on on Monday. I'm going to trade Monday morning and I've got my previous day's low, which is Friday because we don't count the weekend. Friday's low marked out right there, okay? Now, come Monday, price traded down into the low of Friday, all right? Now, as you can see, price came down, swept Friday's low, but it did not yet break market structure shift. So we had a sweep of liquidity, but no shift in market structure yet. In order to see a shift of market structure, we want to see a swing high violated. Now at this point in time, this was the most recent swing high, okay? And price, as you can see, swept, but did not yet sweep, did not yet push past the swing high here, okay? So still waiting. Price came down again, came back into Friday's low, and this time swept in, and the candle pushed up. And what did it do? It broke the most recent swing high. So it formed a swing high here and pushed to the upside. Okay, so now we know that price is looking to be bullish. And in fact, not only did it break this swing high, but it broke this one here and this one here. Okay, so it was very strong push to the upside. Three swing highs broken. So we can be quite confident that is a shift in market structure to the upside. Now, what do we look for? So we look for a sweep of liquidity. Market structure shift. Now the final piece of the puzzle, what was it? A fair value gap. Now as you can see, when price pushed through and broke that swing high, it left a gap. So if we look at the wick, top of the wick before the big candle and the bottom of the wick after it, it left a gap in here. Okay, and look at that. Price went up, broke market structure, came back down, touched the gap, and then took off. All right? So... That is a valid 
set up right there using the liquidity left at yesterday's low all right now some of you would be asking all right that's good now i've got the setup where do i place my take profit stop loss and all of that so typically i like to place my entry so you'd want to enter right at the top at the closest point to price in the fair value gap so you enter right there and the stop loss you want to put normally at the swing low okay at the swing low of closest to the fair value gap created the most recent swing low all right that's where you'd put that now what would you target for your profit now the safest way to take profit here is to target what ICT calls low hanging fruit okay so low hanging fruit is the most recent swing high in this case so the most recent swing in price is typically a good level to target if you want a real safe nice easy move otherwise what you're looking to target is other zones of liquidity. So where does liquidity rest? It's swing highs, equal highs, equal lows. Okay, so you could say there's a swing high here. That could be a target. This 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 could be a target. You get the idea, all right? And in fact, price left a big opening gap here. So that could be a big imbalance for that price would want to draw to because price typically fills gaps. So even that could be a target. All right, so there's many ways and it all depends on how comfortable you are with holding the trade, but you want to target other zones of liquidity, which are swing highs, swing lows, relative equal lows, relative equal highs and gaps. So me personally, if I was in this trade, I like to take my trades nice and safe. I like to be sure I'm walking away with some sort of profit. So I would have taken my profit right there at the swing high, all right, just to be safe because that's fairly certain when price has shifted to the bullish market structure, you can be fairly certain that it's going to take out the most recent swing high that is made, all right? So I would have taken that one-to-one -one, uh, for five handles, five points, $250 net on a futures account trading one contract. And then if you wanted to, you could even, once price hit this swing high here, you could take off one contract, take some partials, move your stop to break even, and let the rest ride to other areas of liquidity. See how far it will go, trailing your stop all the way up, okay? So that's using the previous day's low and as you can see on this particular day price also came to the previous day's high which is unusual um, and as you can see here there was a setup took quite some time to form though so we won't cover that but price did come up swept the previous day's high came above broke market structure broke the low here came down and price filled the fair value gap resting right here quite some time afterwards and we put a stop right here and you could have ridden that down to an area of liquidity below. So that's using yesterday's swing high, yesterday's swing low. Now, next example that we'll look at is using relative equal highs and relative equal lows on the lower time frames. In this case, the one minute time frame. So I'll show you that in the next example. All right, so here we are. This is our scalping example on the one minute time frame, okay? So this is what I mean by you can find this on any time frame, okay? It happens all the time. So first of all, guys, let me get this for you. So as you can see over here, what are these? Relative equal lows. See, price came down, tapped here, tapped here. In fact, they're perfectly equal lows. And again, even it tapped over here. One, two, three. And Retail would be viewing this as a point of support, right? Because prices come down, their buy it goes up, come down again, their buy it goes up. They'd be thinking that again on the third time, wouldn't they? Like, oh cool, it's touch support, time to buy. Put my stop loss down here. So what did we say before? This is sell side liquidity, okay? Anytime you see equal lows, equal highs, sell side liquidity. All right, so we'll keep that on there. And that is a area of liquidity, all right? At equal, perfectly equal lows. Okay, so, so next one, after those equal, perfectly equal lows here are formed, we can be expecting price to seek that liquidity before shifting and going to the other side, okay? So, if we look down here at the lower, uh, zoom in on the lower time frame on the one minute here, so we have the equal lows formed, price came down, all right, as expected, traded down below, now, what are we looking for? We're not looking to short. After price comes below an area of liquidity that we're targeting, like equal lows, we're not looking to short anything here, right? So what we're waiting for now is a shift of market structure to the upside. So as you can see, price came below, 
No shift in market structure, still making lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. But then over here, we had price push up and close above here. All right. So that is what? A swing high. All right. So price pushed above that, causing a change in market structure, shift in market structure to the upside after sweeping liquidity. And that's where it's important. Remember, liquidity sweep comes first. That's what validates any of these trades. So the liquidity sweep, liquidity sweep happened first. Now we have a shift in market structure. And now what's in here? A gap. Okay. Between here, this candle and the candles wick above it, a gap. All right, and what did price do? It shifted market structure, returned to that gap, and boosted to the upside. All right, now I wanna show you something cool in this example. So here's where a good target would be. This is where I would personally target, and I can show you how powerful this strategy is here by showing you the risk to reward ratio on this one. So not only was there equal lows here, but, we had perfectly equal highs right here. Look at that. So there was two areas, equal lows, equal highs, okay? Now we swept equal lows first, all right? And the market structure shifted to the bullish, to the upside here after sweeping the lows. So because the equal highs here were left untouched, we know that the price and the market does not like to leave equal highs or equal lows open for too long so price is bound to come back up and take liquidity from these areas too so by seeing price come down to sweep the equal lows as soon as we saw this market structure shift fair value gap is created you get in there long of course your long position is at the top of the gap so you can ensure you get triggered in put your stop loss at the most recent swing low and your target for this is going to be that area of liquidity the other untouched equal highs, okay? So that is what I would personally target in this example. If there's equal highs left open, that is a prime target for price to be hunting. It's gonna be stop hunting up there, okay? So look at that, risk to reward ratio 2.69, and that is nice and easy profit right there. And look, you barely had to risk anything in order to secure that much. So that is 10, points okay so look at that that is a very good risk to return on the one minute time frame okay so you're looking at relative equal lows relative equal highs being swept a shift to the upside or downside depending which side you're on and then riding that to the next zone of liquidity and that was the most obvious zone of liquidity here of course you could have targeted if you were going to be safer other you know most recent swing highs like this here one two three but like I said, when there's equal highs left, price doesn't like to leave those open for too long. So that would have been a nice safe target in my opinion to ride, take that up, boom, price secured the stops above there. All right, so that's how that's how it works in the one minute time frame. That's how you can see it a bit closer. This is typically how I trade every day, that daily sweep. So the sweep of the previous day's lows and highs, that typically only happens once to twice a week in my experience. So most days I'm trading this strategy. I'm looking at the lower time frames for equal highs, equal lows, looking for them to be swept before I push up or down, okay? That's the strategy I use most of the time, okay? So important things to note, all right? So fair value gaps are only reliable entry points if liquidity was swept first or if it's formed in trend as a continuation. And I'll make another video on that later. But for now, just worry about looking at the ones that are formed right after a liquidity sweep. They are your most reliable fair value gaps. Not all gaps are created equal, okay? And in the same way, market structure shifts are only really reliable after liquidity is swept first. Otherwise, there's a higher probability of a fake market structure shift, and they happen quite frequently. So watching for liquidity sweeps is really the key to making this work, okay? If there's no liquidity sweep first, then it's invalid, all right? That liquidity sweep is key to this being a valid strategy, key to taking a valid trade, okay? So any time I'm trading, I'm first watching for that liquidity sweep, all right? Now, my personal trading rules for consistency with this strategy, I generally like to take profit at five points or 10 pips in Forex. Uh, five points in futures, 10 pips in Forex. Now, these moves happen all day, every day, 
any time of the day and they will consistently deliver at least five points for the most part, okay? So if I'm really wanting to be safe and really wanting to walk away with some consistent profit, I'll take the setup and I'll walk away with five points. That's what I've been doing recently with the market conditions at the moment. Some of the worst conditions I've seen in my five years trading and uh, many experienced traders will attest to that as well. It's just been so volatile and choppy, so I've just been walking away with five points or 10 pips profit per trade per day, okay? And secondly, I never risk more than 0.5% of my account balance on one trade. And I'll aim for at least a one to two risk to reward ratio. So about a 1% return per trade, which is really good. Okay, because I get a, I get a setup like this every single day. And 1% a day, although not what always happens, it typically ends up being two to 3% per, per week. Um, you know, it could be 5% per week if every day was a winning day, winning trade. So not realistic to win every single day, but just keep that in mind. 1% per day is nothing to laugh at. All right. So don't be fooled by these trading gurus out there who say, give you know, 10R, 20R, big, huge home run trades. That stuff doesn't happen consistently. All right. And those traders are the ones who blow up most often. If you're going to do this consistently, professionally, you know, 1% a day is huge. All right. So even then, Keep that in mind. Never risk more than 0.5%. Protect your capital and aim for at least a 1% return per trade. Don't don't be shy of walking away 1%. That's a great return. And lastly, I will stop trading for the day if two losses in a session. Okay, it's a non-negotiable. If I win, if I lose twice in a session, I'm out. So that means maximum I can lose in a day is 1%, and the minimum I can make in a day is 1%. So the math works out there. Okay, you gotta have math working on your side. Okay, so I will lose maximum of two trades in a day and I'll gain a minimum of 1% in a day, all right? So at, at, at worst, I break even, and at best, who knows, sky's the limit, all right? So those are my rules for consistency and risk management, all right? That's how I trade. That's my trading strategy in a nutshell. There's a few more nuances to it, but just wanted to give a simple breakdown for you guys, all right? And if you enjoyed this video and it made a bit more sense for you, gave you a bit of clarity in the markets, um, subscribe for the algorithm, please. And I do live trade every single day at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. So you can uh, tune in for that if you want to see this in action. Um, otherwise, if you're looking to trade futures, you want to get funded to trade, I am partnered with Top Step. It's who I trade with every single day. So the link in the description is for 20% off on that. And if you're interested in joining my Discord, a little private community, along with a, a course that details the strategy in a bit more depth. Um, and a bit more of the, my personal nuances, then you can join my private Discord, $39 a month, link is in the description.